You're on 94.9. It's 11 minutes past eight. And we're with Dr. John from Creation Ministries International, who uh, can tell us all about evolution, creation, and uh, even aliens and dinosaurs. Good morning, Dr. John. Great to have you this morning. Yeah, good morning, Mick. Good to be here again. Yes, absolutely. And Dr. John, I've been um, I've been talking to people this morning about a whole lot of, I guess, stuff that we've been taught at school. That um, you know, we were taught that they were facts. And, in fact, they were pretty much myths. They're myths that have been debunked. Stuff that, uh, you know, like Henry Ford inventing the motor vehicle and all that sort of stuff. It's not true. He wasn't the man that did it. It was Ben's that did it. Um, you know, elephants. They don't have elephant graveyards. Yeah, I know. That was one that I definitely got taught at school. Um, you know, Napoleon being a short man. And, you know, people call, talk about, you know, the, the Napoleon syndrome. And um, the bottom line is... Uh, French inches were longer than English inches and he actually stood taller than most European men at the time. Um, things like alcohol killing brain cells. Yeah, we know it's not good for you, but it doesn't actually kill brain cells and cracking your knuckles doesn't cause arthritis. Sugar doesn't make kids hyperactive. Ostriches don't hide their head in the sand. Um, you know, so many different things that we've learnt over the years at school that, um, you know, quite often they're things that were only taught, you know, in the last few hundred years. We came out with a new theory and taught it as fact and then it's been debunked. Yet we hear stuff about dinosaurs from millions of years ago, Dr. John, and um, so many people accept it as fact. And um, then, of course, the next generation builds on those theories and then the next generation builds on that one again. And their so-called facts just get blown out of proportion until we find out that they're not even real. But even when we find out they're not real, they're still taught, like a lot of these things, as facts in school. It's a bit of a shame, Dr John. It is, Mick. And, uh, I mean, you uh, you mentioned that bit about... Uh dinosaurs and uh, millions of years ago and uh, that that was uh, one of the things that uh, I was going to talk about this morning because uh, I think I sent you the article there was a, um, a discovery of dinosaur footprints in an Ipswich coal mine yes and uh, it, it happened about uh, 60 years ago and the uh, the miners were in a uh, coal seam about 200 meters below the surface and they spotted these uh, three uh, footprints in the uh, the sedimentary rock uh, above them. And, of course, that's what you get in coal mines. You get uh, coal seams, which is the buried vegetation, and above and below that you get the, uh, the sedimentary sandstone. Mm -hmm. So uh, you get uh, uh, lots of seams with these sedimentary rock layers in between. Anyway, apparently they uh, they called in the scientists at the time and uh, they took some photos of the uh, dinosaur tracks, you know, great big tracks, yep. and they made a plaster cast of one of the footprints. And uh, they decided that it was a pretty large uh, predator and they put the plaster cast in a museum. Mm -hmm. Anyway, a couple of uh, uh, modern scientists decided that they wanted to do a re-examination of the plaster cast. So uh, they used a bit more uh, sophisticated e equipment and uh, they decided that it wasn't a predator after all, but really a more of a, uh, a lumbering sauropod. Mm. Now, uh, you know... Uh, it, they can't go back and have a look at where it was originally found because the mine's closed and the whole area has been destroyed anyway. Mm. But, you know, by uh, 3D imaging of the plaster cast mm -hmm. out of a museum, they decided that it was 200 million years old. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Now, isn't that fantastic? You know, uh, you, you you grab a plaster cast out of a, uh, a museum, you do a bit of 3D imaging, and then you decide that it's 200 uh, million years old. Now, Dr. And, John, uh, and in, in, in looking at, at, at this story, I, I found another story. Obviously, when the media gets hold of this, it goes to a lot of media organisations at the same time. And right. the same story in mickey.com.au, they're talking about this same dinosaur. 
from that plaster cast of a footprint, they've actually drawn a picture of the dinosaur, the like a full picture of this giant dinosaur um, next to a man, mind you. Um, and like they show his toes and his fingers and his whole facial features. This is from a footprint. And, of course, underneath it, it says hypothetical reconstruction. <laughs> I think that's uh, probably true, uh, hypothetical. And our regular listeners uh, will know that uh, we often uh, uh, um, question how you can get the uh, the sort of ages that they can get from, uh, from the sort of uh, discoveries that they make. And, of course, they also uh, went on to say on that article that uh, Australia at that time was very much further south. Now, they obviously didn't get that from the uh, the plaster cast, <laughs> and they decided it was attached to uh, Antarctica. Again, they didn't get that from the, uh, the plaster cast. Mm-hmm. But I, I suppose uh, uh, you'd have to say the climate must have been different uh, at the time, because, and there's actually coal in the Antarctic. Yep. So obviously uh, there, there, there have been uh, differences over the years, and uh, the the trees that formed the uh, the coal were obviously growing on a continent that's uh, very different from what we've got now, mm. with a totally different uh, climate. But you see, the creationist perspective gives you the true history. Uh, we know that creation took place according to our Bible about six thousand years ago. We know that that first creation, that first world, was destroyed and all the trees were uprooted and uh, buried about uh, 1,600 years later. Mm -hmm. Now, that's where the coal came from. And that's where the the sedimentary layers that we find these dinosaur tracks came from. And uh, so that means the tracks, according to the Bible, are about 4,500 years old and they're not. 200 million years. So, you know, uh, as you rightly said at the beginning, you get all of this stuff uh, that you're taught at school and gets repeated and repeated, but uh, really it uh, it isn't true. We've been talking about some uh, pretty exciting stuff this morning. A uh, big dinosaur that, uh, well, they found a print in Australia. Uh, they dated it. They told us so much about the dinosaur prints. And uh, I was telling Dr. John about uh, so many things we learn in school these days that that were proven wrong years ago, yet in a lot of cases they're still being taught. And, uh, Dr. John, I also noticed a few stories uh, that were talking about how, um, you know, so many things spoken in the Bible, talked about in the Bible, that couldn't possibly have been proven scientifically back in the day, that people would have been scratching their head going, are you serious? Um, which have now been proven because of um, you know technology these days, we can prove stuff that's actually in the Bible. Like <laughs> one thing, of course, that the Earth is round. Um, we know the Earth is round now because we got science, you know, satellites and stuff out there pointing at it and taking photos of it. Um, but there's so many different things that the Bible has told us about that are absolutely 100% right that, um, you know, back in those days they would not have known that, yet they're correct. So interesting seeing both sides of that. And also I just wanted to mention with that dinosaur that you were talking about before, Dr John, they, uh, you know, they might have found this only in our lifetime. Um, or you know, not long before, and they found these footprints in a uh, in a mine, and they've sort of said, okay, we've got this dinosaur that has footprints that are you know up to sort of forty six centimeters. They've worked out, um, and that's like a really big footprint. Well, now only sort of fifty or sixty years later, was it sixty years ago, Doctor John? Yeah, 60 years ago, the, uh, that mine discovery, yep. Yep. Well, the footprint they found back then was 46 centimetres, and uh, today they've realised, no, it's only 32 to 34 centimetres. I mean, they can't even get the footprint right, which they can look at, yet they can tell us how many million years old it is by the footprint and show us what the actual dinosaur looked like with all these facial features, yet all they got was a footprint. It's amazing how they do it. Admittedly, the picture looks amazing, but um, just because there's a good artist doesn't mean it's correct, right? Well, that, that, that's right. A, uh, a good artist can do all sorts of things with a, uh, a picture. And uh, unfortunately, you see, that's 
uh, put something in uh, people's minds that uh, these things really do uh, exist. Well, obviously, the dinosaur existed, and uh, maybe he did look a bit like that. Maybe he didn't. Who would know from uh, the plaster cast of a footprint? But, uh, yeah, no, the uh, the artist can do all sorts of things. Mm. But, look, th- there was another article that uh, I sent to you that I, I want to uh, have a talk about this morning, mm. and uh, uh, we've talked about it before, and that's uh, the uh, supposed evolution of uh, elephants without tusks and uh, it is true uh, that a lot of uh, African female elephants these days don't have tusks and the change has been pretty dramatic all right yeah, well, we'll I think... that in a minute Absolutely. I think we'll have a song right now. We'll uh, go into the news and then when we come back international, it's been a uh, pretty interesting morning talking about dinosaurs and, um, yeah, all sorts of other stuff. We're about to talk about elephants. But, Dr John, we had uh, a question come through that we might have to put on notice till next week. It's uh, from Perry. It says, Why haven't the global warming advocates bought up the Chinese treasure ships of Zeng? He of the early 1400s, travelling through the Bering Strait towards the North Pole, then went west around the top side of Russia as a shortcut to Europe. If there's global warming, why isn't that route still open? Go figure. Yeah, that is a very interesting question, Dr John. I'm uh, keen to hear yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, Rick, and uh, as you say, we better take that on notice because it's ta- going to take a little bit more than uh, just a minute or two to answer. So we'll uh, we'll look at that one next week. Yeah, and we can probably add a few other little bits to that too. I mean, we talk about climate change a lot. We see it in the news a lot. And um, a lot of people don't realise that it's, uh, well, been fluctuating so much and uh, it might not be as it appears. Anyway, you were talking, Dr John, about elephants. Yeah, that's uh, that's right, Mick. This was a a great article and, of course, uh, it's another one of those things that is called evolution. But when you have a look at the uh, uh, the facts, then obviously it isn't. And this is uh, a story about how um, uh, female African elephants uh, seem to be uh, having many more of them without tusks. Mm-hmm. And, of course, as I said, uh, it was called evolution, but uh, clearly it isn't. Mm. And it seems to have happened uh, in this particular study anyway in Mozambique over the last 50 years. And uh, uh, female African elephants normally do have uh, tusks, but in this uh, scientific study, they discovered the reason why some of them don't. And there's a couple of uh, genetic mutations that seem to uh, cause it. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're a disadvantage to elephants, of course. As with all mutations, they tend to uh, uh, be uh, harmful. They're because tusks are actually useful for elephants. But anyway, this, uh, this study took place in Mozambique. And uh, in Mozambique, uh, there was a civil war from the uh, late 70s for about uh, 20 years. Mm-hmm. And at the start of that civil war, uh, they felt that there were about 2,500 uh, elephants in this uh, particular area, and about 18% of the female ele- elephants didn't have tusks. But uh, by the end of the war, the population had been reduced to about 250, and by this stage, about 50% of the uh, female elephants didn't have tusks. So uh, they called it evolution, but of course it isn't. Because apparently during the war, uh, both sides uh, shot out a lot of uh, elephants uh, to get their tusks for ivory to finance their war effort. Mm. So of course they didn't bother to shoot the uh, female elephants that uh, didn't have any tusks. And uh, uh, I mean, the interesting thing about it is that they did discover what the mutations were. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of them happens to be on the X chromosome. And uh, females have two X chromosomes, whereas males only have one. And, of course, males get their X chromosome from their mother. Now... If it happens to be the uh, the damaged X chromosome, then a lot of the uh, male elephant calves don't uh, uh, don't develop properly, and they get miscarried. If they get the uh, the good X chromosome from their mother, 
they don't. Mm. And, uh, of course, that means that uh, there are very uh, uh, many less male elephants being born. They mostly have female calves because, uh, obviously, the uh, the males don't develop properly. So uh, there is a scientific reason why this is happening, but, of course, it isn't evolution. It's uh, quite obvious that uh, uh, they have discovered the real reason why these elephants don't have tusks. And uh, there's, there's obviously some uh, other things that are going to uh, occur from this because... Elephants use their tusks for a variety of uh, reasons, digging in the ground and stripping bark off trees and so on. Well, the elephants without the tusks can't do that. They can only eat grass. So uh, uh, there's obviously some environmental changes occurring. And uh, it's just another example of how man has caused very serious damage. And, uh, I mean, we've talked about that in other contexts as well. It's very similar to the development of uh, uh, antibiotic-resistant bacteria. Because of what mankind is doing, we are finding these mutant bacteria, the the ones that are actually weaker, they are the ones that are now coming to the fore. Just like with the uh, female elephants, they've got a harmful mutation, but uh, they're coming to the fore because of man's activities. So in neither case is it uh, evolution, but, uh, but there is a, an obvious scientific explanation. And uh, if you are a creationist and a Bible believer, then you can easily find out the reason why. Absolutely. I mean, interesting what you say about that. There's there's no new creation or new elephant there. There's no evolution of the elephant. I mean, in Genesis 2, 1, it said, Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. Well, you know, that's the first law of thermodynamics, which they didn't know when they wrote the Bible back then. And uh, that that law pretty much states that neither matter nor energy can either be created or destroyed. There's no creation ongoing today. It is finished exactly as the Bible says. And um, pretty much, you know, what's going on these days is more de-evolution. It's pretty much the uh, things falling apart rather than new things coming together. That's right, right, yeah, Dr. That's John? That's exactly, uh, exactly right, and it's exactly what's happening to uh, the, the elephants. The mutations are harmful. They go in a, a downward uh, direction, but because of man's activities, they are increasing. But it's not evolution. It's, if anything, devolution. Yeah, well, when you look at the Nothing law... Nothing new is being created. Absolutely. The first law of thermodynamics, the Bible just proves it, huh? It is nine. You're on 94.9. It is a quarter to nine. We'll be international. Who answers your questions? Uh, anything that you send through to our text line, just SMS 0401 949 949. Dr. John often talks about stuff that's come out in the news over the last couple of weeks as well. And uh, one question we did have that came in last week, Dr. John, was in, in relation to stuff that's uh, predicted or you know prophesized about in the Bible. They talk about things like uh, you know the mark of the beast, and there's people out there freaking out at the moment, sort of saying you know they they, they think that this um, you know being forced to have a vaccine is is a precursor to the mark of the beast. And there's other people saying, well, what about you know the uh, uh, the whole financial uh, thing, you know, it talks about a, um, a cashless society in the Bible and um, we don't want to see that happening. And people are asking questions now. If the Bible says that we've got a cashless society coming, is it something that we should sort of put pressure against and say, no, stop it, stop it? Or is it something we should just accept because it talks about it in the Bible? Yeah, well, look, it, it's a uh, it's a great question, uh, Mick, because it opens up a lot of uh, other issues that have really come to the surface with the uh, the COVID problem. Mm. And uh, some people might say, well, uh, what's a question like that got to do with the creation evolution issue, which is uh, obviously the issue that uh, we mostly talk about. And um, uh, I think we need to remember that uh, we're involved at, at Creation Ministries in this uh, uh, e- creation evolution debate because we believe the Word of God as it's written. And uh, we believe that God says what he means and he means what he says. Mm. And uh, he's described how and when the world began 
And he's also described how and when it's, uh, it's going to end. Mm-hmm. Now, he hasn't put a date on it, but he has said that there'll be certain indicators that it is imminent. And uh, one of those is uh, famines and pestilences. Now, uh, obviously, there have always been uh, pestilences and uh, many worse than the one that we're currently experiencing. But none of them have seen the uh, worldwide response and reactions like we've, uh, we've seen with uh, COVID. And, of course, it doesn't really matter what the origin of the virus was or whether the, uh, the, the vaccines and vaccinations pr- uh, programs are uh, uh, good or bad. Uh, that's, um, uh, we're not even going to get into that. But uh, in any case, it's actually irrelevant to uh, the spiritual issues that go so much deeper. And, of course, our question, uh, our listener has asked this question about the uh, cashless society. Mm. Now, we need to uh, remember that uh, the Bible tells us that our battle is not against flesh and blood. You know, it's against principalities and powers. And that means that uh, what's behind all the, uh, the bad things, including sickness and diseases and pestilences, is the, uh, the devil and a host of evil spirits. Now, we know that's true because uh, when we read the book of Job, we see what happened to Job. You know, his, uh, his worldly possessions got wiped out, his, uh, his kids were all killed, his uh, uh, camels and his oxen and his sheep were all stolen. And, of course, the, uh, the devil was able to uh, afflict Job with uh, these terrible boils. Now, it is true that uh, wicked man can willingly cooperate with the devil and do his bidding. And uh, I'm sure that's uh, happened a lot with this virus. But there's a a lot of uh, other people who are, in my opinion, unwittingly supporting the the devil and his plans. And I want to uh, suggest why and how. And uh, we may not be able to uh, finish that this week anyway because it's a, uh, a pretty complicated thing. But we know that the ultimate satanic plan is the control and enslavement of the human race. And he started doing that in the, uh, the garden with uh, Adam and Eve. He tempted Adam and Eve and he got hold of the authority and dominion that had been actually given to them by the Lord. So uh, this is uh, where we're, uh, uh, we're, I think we've uh, got to explore that a bit deeper and we'll probably have to continue on in it next week, I think, Mick. Yes. Well, Dr. John, thank you for another awesome week and uh, very interesting about the dinosaurs and the ages and uh, it's always exciting talking to you, Dr. John, about all of these things and answering these questions. And if anybody does have any interesting questions for Dr. John, anything that you'd like to know about creation, evolution, dinosaurs or aliens, please send those questions through to us to our text line 0401 949 949. Of course, uh, creation.com. Um, they've got thousands of pages of information on there. If you do have questions and you'd like instant answers or maybe you're talking to your kids about stuff, yeah, jump onto creation.com. Otherwise, send us the questions. We'd love to hear about them. And uh, Creation, they've also got a, uh, yeah, they've got a session on tonight, I believe, at 7.30, Dr. John on creation.com, where people can, um, yeah, jump online and uh, watch a pretty cool uh, sort of session and then ask questions afterwards. Yes, all all of that uh, goes on on the uh, the website, and uh, I would encourage people to really uh, look at that creation dot com. You'll see a whole lot of interesting things. You can ask uh, uh, questions. You can look up uh, uh, articles on various topics. It's a very very informative website. All righty. Well, thank you, Doctor John, for another awesome week.